This is Pat OB at Purdue University Northwest. I'm going to give a quick demo on the use of eViews to perform vector error correction model and provide some interpretations of the test results. Now remember that if non-stationary time series are integrated of the first order, I1 that is, and found to be co-integrated, we can proceed and run the vector error correction model. Now doing so enables us to examine both the short run as well as the long run dynamics of the co-integrated series. As a reminder though, in step number one, I showed how we begin with a unit test to ascertain if the variables are I1. In step number two, I showed the process for determining the optimal number of lags to use in the co-integration test and subsequent error correction model. And in step number three, I demonstrated how to carry out the Johansson test of co-integration. Now, having found the variables to be co-integrated, we now proceed with the vector error correction model. In step number four, the VECM is a restricted VAR model. Now, I begin by showing the conventional error correction model for co-integrated time series which shows the change in y right here to be a function of not only previous changes in y but also current and past changes in x. In the model though all variables are considered endogenous. Importantly we specify the error correction term z which actually is a variable of the lagged OLS residuals from this long run co-integrating equation. So and uh, this is the full definition of it of course if you solve for it uh, directly from this long run uh, model you see it right here so this is called the co-integrating equation right here. The error correction term relates to the fact that last period a deviation from long run equilibrium, that deviation being the error, influences the short run dynamics of the dependent variable y. Thus, the coefficient of the error correction term, which is phi right here, is considered the speed of adjustments because it measures, as I note here, the speed at which y returns to equilibrium after a change has occurred in the explanatory variable. So the steps for implementing the VEC model on eViews are outlined right here and the command actually. So I'm going to go and demo it right quick. So these are the two variables that we're working with, right? exchange rate and crude oil. Highlighted, I can actually open them if I want as a group. So right click, hover on open and click on S group and here you have it. I have 138 observations of um, exchange rate measured as euros per dollar and uh, one month crude oil futures prices. So to do this we're gonna go to quick and go down here to estimate VAR, click on it and we're going to check vector error correction, click on this, and we're going to list our variables. I'm going to list fx as our target variable. The variable you list first is your target variable, space, and then type all, right? Uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. Now, just to be sure, you can click on this co-integration tab to confirm that the number of co-integrating um, uh, is uh, the number of coin uh, uh, co integration uh, co integrating co equation is one excuse me there all right so uh, and it shows correctly so let's go back to basics if you want to you don't have to really you can just go ahead and click OK and here's your results which I can expand um, you can see the whole shebang right here all right so what I've done is to copy this out and put it on PowerPoint with annotations to make this a little bit more delightful for you. So let's bring back up my PowerPoint right there and pull it up. And so again, as a reminder, this is the vector error correction model and the co-integrating equation is this. And so now, when you look at this output, there are two aspects of it that are particularly of interest. 
The first is the main equation right here. This is it right here, all right, shown in a column-wise fashion for a change in fx, all right, which is the target variable. And I've written it out in the conventional form right here. So based on how the output comes out here on A views, the co-integrating equation showing its coefficients comes first. So this is the coefficient of the co-integrating equation, negative 0 0.0378, and that's it right here, all right? The for the error correction term. Alright, so that's this term right here. Your phi is negative 0 0.037, z t minus 1 is your error correction term lagged one period. And then these first two terms right here refer to the lag values of y, all right, which is this first term right here. So you see it here for the first lagged value, and you see the next coefficient here for the second lagged value. So I've written them out right here for you. And followed, following that would be the coefficients for the, for the lagged values of x. And you see them here for oil lagged 1 and oil lagged 2. So these are the coefficients, this value here and this value here. And here they are shown here respectively. And then the last coefficient you see here is the constant which is your b sub 0, your beta sub 0, and that's it right here. So I've written out the equation in the way that eViews um, provides them. Now the second aspect of what you see here that's particularly important is the co-integrating equation, which is our long-run model, and that's what you see right here. Now again, this is our co-integrating equation right here, and the first a term that you see here is the value of y lagged one period or fx lagged one period which is one the coefficient is one and that's what you see right here right and then you see the constant right the constant constant b sub zero comes out last right here and that's it right there it's a negative value and then your b1 is the coefficient of the lag value of the explanatory variable in this case oil and this is the coefficient and that's it right here. So this term is this term right here. So and of course we noted earlier that this error correction model result is statistically significant. Now though, importantly we need to look at the system equation and find the p-values so as to be able to draw some important conclusions concerning the long run um, causality as well as short run causality. All right, so we can already see them right here. So we can see the um, uh, test statistic for the co-integrating equation. We can also see that for um, the sh for the short term um, variables right here. However, we need the system equation to be able to test the coefficients, especially for the short-term variables jointly, and we can do so and make it look real nice by doing. Uh, by um, uh, looking at the p-values for the coefficients. So that's what I'm going to do now on eViews. So let's do that. So to do so, we're going to go to PROC right there, and then we go to Make System, hover it over there, and go out here, Order by Variable. Oh, wow, so now you have it. I'm going to shrink this some so that it's not necessary. We see it all like that. So now, again, you see this? This is your co-integrating equation, if I might highlight it so you can see it. This whole thing is your co-integrating equation. Observe that the coefficient phi is C1, and then C2, C3, C4, C5 are the short-term coefficients. So now, Let's go ahead and, uh, from this system equation, um, obtain the coefficients and uh, then find um, the p-values associated with those coefficients. So what I'm going to do for this target equation right here for exchange rate, I'm going to highlight it all and then I'm going to copy it, right-click, copy, and then I'm going to go to Quick estimate equation, click on it, and then paste. Right click and then paste. All right. And 
we're going to click OK. Voila. So these are the coefficients that you saw earlier for um, for the uh, in the vector error correction model output. Now these are the p values that you see right here. Right. So this is much clearer than what you saw before. So now considering the error correction model, this is you can see the um, equation right here, the estimated equation right there. So these coefficients C1 all the way to C6, where C6 is actually the intercept, here they are, and these are their respective p-values. Importantly, this is, this row here is what we're particularly interested in, because again, this is our phi, which is the speed of adjustment toward long-run equilibrium. This value has to be positive, uh, sorry, has to be negative and statistically significant for it to retain its economic interpretation, so to speak. And as we can see here, it does satisfy both um, conditions. It is negative and it is statistically significant. By being negative, it tells us that if there is a, depar a departure in one direction, the correction would have to be pulled back to the other direction so as to ensure that equilibrium is, re is uh, retained. And so to interpret this number here, it's going to tell us that about 3.8% of departures from long-run equilibrium is corrected each period. And also because um, C1 is uh, this speed of adjustment is statistically significant. It also means that oil, which is the explanatory variable in this specification, Granger causes exchange rate, by the way. So you can make that inference in the Granger causality sense. And of course, we saw earlier the direction of uh, long run causality is also uh, is negative. So now when you do a vector error correction model, and if the uh, model is correctly specified, the error term as shown right here should be between negative 1 and 0. A positive error correction uh, uh, coefficient, uh, positive coefficient is not a good sign for your model because it implies that the process is not converging in the long run. And that could be perhaps due to some instabilities in the model. So when that happens, it might actually mean that there are some specification problems with your model, and, or maybe there are some data issues that you need to actually uh, look into. All right now, right here, the short run coefficients are going to be uh, C2, C3, but these are short run coefficients associated with uh, the dependent variable in the, the target variable oil, as you can see here, are C2 and C3. We're particularly interested in C4 and C5, right? So, and I beg your pardon, C2 and C3 refers to uh, are the coefficients for the lagged values of the target variable exchange rate. Now, we're particularly interested in C4 and C5 because these are the short run coefficients that will tell us whether in the short run oil Granger causes exchange rate. So, we need to um, test these two coefficients jointly to be able to make that conclusion. So now we're pretty much done with um, looking into the long run dynamics. And so what we're going to do is to answer the question, does all Granger cause exchange rate? We're going to go to view and coefficient diagnostics, hover it over it and wall test coefficient restrictions All right so we go right there and click on it and then in this open window we're going to type c4 equal c5 equal 0 All right so it's a joint test of those two coefficients for all, All right and then we click okay and that's your result and so from what you see from what we see here we conclude that we cannot reject uh, sorry we 
Uh, here we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Keep in mind that the null hypothesis is that um, oil does not Granger cause exchange rates as we specified in the uh, dialog box. All right, C4 equals C5 is zero. So that's no hypothesis, and because this p-value for the chi-square statistic is way more than 5%, we cannot reject that null hypothesis. And so there is no evidence of short-run causality running from oil to exchange rate. So the um, housekeeping tasks that you need to do here is to do a little bit of residual diagnostics to make sure that this vehicle that's conveying you from Chicago to New York, so to speak, is all in good order and is not going to break down along the way somewhere in Ohio or something. <laughs> all right, so the important one to check is to make sure there is no serial correlation. So to do so, go to view and go down here to residual diagnostics, hover over it and then go over here to serial correlation LM test click on it and make sure you do have the number of lags that you've been using all along and in this case two and then click OK and based on what we see now the null hypothesis is there is no serial correlation and uh, based on what you see right here on this chi-square uh, statistic this sorry this uh, p-value for the chi-square statistic we cannot reject this null hypothesis because this p-value is greater than five percent and uh, as a result we conclude that there is no evidence of zero correlation so we're quite happy with um, with this outcome our model looks good so to speak and it's also helpful to do a little bit of stability diagnostics to make sure that the model is dynamically stable. To do so, you go to view and go down here to stability diagnostics, hover over it, and then go right here to recursive estimates, OLS only, click on it, and then choose a COSM test, and then OK. And in so far, as this blue, a blue trend line uh, lies within the red boundary, the model is said to be dynamically stable. So we're quite happy with this model. And that's a wrap.